So then guys, I love small factor PCs and I especially love this brand new Geekcom machine I have here. This is the Geekcom Mini IT13 and it is a real special powerhouse of a computer what's inside of this but first of all what i want to do is i want to actually show you the unboxing of this mini pc before i go down into all the specs and everything like that about it so let's get started then so then here we have the box and the box is quite modern as you can see here it shows all like the ports and everything shows what sort of chips you can get inside of it and everything and mini it 13 and everything so yeah i do like the actual box here but opening up the box it sort of slides off the top and straight away underneath it you do actually have the econ machine and we'll talk more about the design a little bit later on let's put this to one side let's see what else is in the box here if we move this away all we've got is we've got a hdmi cable so that'll be useful to connect up to a monitor then we have actually got the power brick as well and i'll talk about that in a little bit why and you'll see why in a moment and then we've also got the actual main power supply obviously i'm from the uk so we have this and then what we have here is actually a mount where you can actually mount this actual computer to the back of a monitor for example it's really really cool and then of course there's also some instructions and everything like that to go have a bit of a play around to see how to install everything now, after that unboxing, looking at the overall design of this Geekcom, it is absolutely tiny. Look at this. This is my hand here. And look, it is so, so small. It is a really dinky little computer. And you're going to be really shocked at the specs of this machine when I talk about it in a second. But having a look here, let's have a look at the ports that we have actually on this machine. So on the rear, we actually have a load of ports here. And to start with, we actually have two USB-C ports on the back here. And both of these are USB 4.0 ports, which is really, really good to hear. And so basically, these are really super fast. We've also got a USB 3.2 port and also a USB 2.0 port. And there's also dual HDMI ports. You heard me right there, dual ones. So you can connect up multiple monitors, which is really awesome. And I love this, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connector too and then obviously we also have the power connection now flipping this around here we also have here an sd card slot what's really useful and then actually on the front of this machine what we also have is we've got two more usb 3.2 ports what's really handy and we've also got a headphone port too and then also you've got that power button and then, like I said, the actual size of it is so tiny. This here is an M2 Mac Mini. And just look at the size difference just here on my desk. Now, I know what you're thinking straight away. Well, Matt, this one has the power supply built into it, and this one doesn't. But have a look here. This is with the power brick for the Geekcom. And here is the Mac Mini, and obviously has his power brick built inside of it. But yet, the form factor is still smaller. And looking at this angle here, you can actually see that the Geekcom's a little bit taller than the Mac Mini. But remember, you had all those upgrade abilities, what you could actually put inside of this Geekcom, what was absolutely fantastic. Whereas the Mac Mini, you can't actually do that. And you also have all those extra ports and everything like that too. So with that, let's actually talk about the power, what's actually inside of this machine, because it's absolutely incredible. So what we've actually got inside of this is actually a 13th generation Intel Core i9 chipset you heard me right there an i9 and specifically it's the 3900h chipset and this is a 14 core cpu with 20 threads inside of it it's got six performance cores up to 5.4 gigahertz eight efficient cores up to 4.1 gigahertz and also it's got an iris xe igpu and this has got 96 eus at 1500 megahertz that's quite powerful there is 32 gigabytes ddr4 ram inside it running at 32 megahertz but you could go all up to 64 if you wanted to and then also there is one times m2 sort of um, ssd in here nvme sorry and then obviously that is a gen 4 and there's two terabytes inside of this here but there is also another slot for a standard m2 2242 sata ssd as well you could put that in and then believe it or not looking here upgradeability inside of this machine you can actually fit another ssd here once you take it apart and you can also upgrade things like the ram too there's also wi-fi 6e and bluetooth 5.2 all the standards and obviously with this one here because everything was installed already we have windows 11 pro already pre-installed 
So with all those amazing specs inside us, I still can't believe there's an i9 inside this. What's incredible to be honest, it's crazy. I've actually connected this up then to my main computer and let's have a look then at benchmarking. First of all, how well this computer did. So what I've done is I've loaded up Geekbench 6, as you can see right here. And then what we've done, first of all, is we're going to just run a CPU benchmark. And that is quite impressive what we've got out of this. We've managed to get 2,287 in single core performance. And then multi-core score is actually 10,890. Basically 10,900 if I ran this again. We'd probably get about that figure. So that is absolutely incredible. And in comparison here, guys, just to show you, this is more powerful in single core performance than an M2 Mac Mini. And also it's more powerful in multi-core performance than an M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And this was the eight core one. This is really, really powerful indeed for this little i9 inside of it. So yeah, this is really, really awesome. So with doing that CPU test, obviously I had to go and do a GPU Geekbench test too on this. So the same deal again, I got onto Geekbench and I decided to run the OpenCL Geekbench GPU test. And let's have a look at the score here. So the score came in at 16,193. So it's not the strongest score I'm going to say on here. And obviously if you see it here compared to an M2 chipset, obviously, yeah, that is a head here. But not everything means, you know, everything's correct about benchmarking. It also depends on what you're going to use the actual device for. We'll talk about in a moment. After this, I had to find out how good that M2 NVMe is inside of us, how fast we are getting for the read-write speeds. And to be honest, on Crystal Disk Mark, it's actually coming out quite well. We're getting around the read speed of 4,800, and then we're also getting a write speed of about 4,200, 4,300 sort of speed there, what is really, really good. Now, obviously, because you can upgrade that NVMe, you know, that speed could change completely. But as long as you've got PCIe for sort of NVMe, you should get some really good speeds out of this machine. Now, obviously doing benchmarks is one thing and everything, but actually how about real life situation? So what I've decided to do is a Premiere export actually on this machine. So what I've got here is a 15 minute video to export in Adobe Premiere 2023. And I've ran it here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to just speed up the export here right to the end. And as you can see right here, actually did super well. It exported this whole 15 minute video in nine minutes, 41 seconds. And this is H.264 format. So that is pretty impressive for it to do this. As you can gather, as I had Premiere on this machine, I also put Photoshop on it too, and it worked absolutely fine. There was no problems with Photoshop whatsoever with multiple layers and everything like that. But next of all, let's talk about one thing what this machine actually has a big pro in, and that is actually doing gaming, especially with its Intel iGPU. How powerful is that? Well, the first game I've decided to test out is good old GTA 5, and I've actually done a benchmark testing here, and you can see the results. So in the actual benchmark here and flying, you can see we're getting around 70, 80, even touching 90 sort of frames per second here was really, really good. But once we come back down into sort of the city sort of area, we're only getting around about 60 frames per second or mid 50s, which still is really, really good here. And definitely the game is very playable. And this is also at medium settings at 1080p too. And after running GTA 5, I decided the next game I wanted to test on this was Cyberpunk and see how fast that works with this because that's quite a demanding game. And as you can see here, it's getting around 30 to 40 sort of frames per second. And as you can see, the actual results, we're getting about 35, 36 frames per second, what is really, really good. But obviously what I did have on, I did have the Intel XE Super Sampling 1.1 on, on performance mode. And also the sharpener was changed a bit too. And obviously there's no ray tracing whatsoever. So that was not bad. The game again was playable. So playing games on this is really, really good. So obviously you're not going to get the same sort of thing as like a dedicated graphics card or anything like that. But for what you're getting with this machine, it is a fantastic device. And I would say this is worthy of an NUC or NUC, whatever they were called, um, an alternative out there. Because obviously they've stopped making them in Taha, but it is absolutely brilliant. I love Geek I'm still waving the flag, as it were, for this device. And it is brilliant. And if you want to find out more information about it, and also there's 
some great deals for this device too. Make sure you check out the link that's in the description of this video because there's some fantastic discounts that Geekom are doing right now at the time that this video is coming out. So make sure you check them out in the description of this video. And with that, guys, I'm going to have a bit more of a play with this. And so with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also, if you want to hear the latest technology news, reviews, and comparisons, please also make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.